Another year, another option. Another year, another Lazarus final chase. Another year, another Super Bowl. Another year, another Teapot. Teapot 2 was horribly disappointing that killed this season, but Teapot 3? Nah, there's no attention to detail and it's still wet and still the same, but it's slightly better than Teapot 2. Teapot 4 is getting something different and maybe they're finally listening and taking things seriously. We get to see David in the thumbnail. Will the Exiters open this door for the first time ever? Let's just review Teapot 3 and Teapot 4. First of all, I'll show you first why Teapot 3 is semi-okay. To start this episode, it's going to be catastrophic. Donut notices blocks fall everywhere. Snowball threatens to to get rid of the blocks, but they insist that they're not causing any problems. Much to do to Dismal, Nelly is stabbed into the ground when she gets hit by blocks. Winner tries to hold the tower of blocks back, but she says that preventing death is death packed against Cha and gets crushed by blocks. Oh no! Eggie, then the Mark Peg slip on Mark Peg's on it, and blocks fall on them too. Everyone save yourselves! Ah! Then, Lana begins to say that when she sees Hobbit, she wants to Hobbit, but Rocky instead does it for her, Hobbit on Winter causing them to fail keeping track of the tower. The top of the tower lands on Tennis Ball and gets blown away, hidden on Robot Flower showcasing freshness at Ray Kapirka, saying that she should be careful next time. Once Robot Flower got hit by Tennis Ball, she accidentally killed Kirtha by activating and dropping the set gun at the same time. Last episode, we want to plan on killing Kirtha once time's up, but they did kill Kirtha, but it's too late. It was accidental, anyways, but then Racer discovers the gun and shoots it to window from the hotel, this is where the place that we wanted to see the failed computers, like I was saying, causing a bunch of glass shards to land on Toon's cheesecake, causing Toon to desperately play the intro. The strongest team on earth! We knew Cake, Tree, Barf of Egg, Eggy, and the tears from died. For those you've been wondering. What? Well, how did she die? Well, you see. Price tag, grassy, ice cube, coiny, tough ball and nickel. Unfortunately, they were all killed by the blocks off screen again. This is why the White Brothers doesn't want your favorite characters to die on screen. Two times in a row when my favorite character dies off screen since he caught two. This is so annoying and pathetic. Okay, and that should be everyone back. At least Winter didn't die. Good. Back to the episode, before the cake at stake, which the new intro will be mentioned later, who recovered all the recently deceased contestants, death packed again, were very disappointed about the multiple death counts they faced today. I'm also disappointed when Bryce Tag died off screen again. Will Bryce Tag ever die on Teapot 5, but this time on screen? I hope I'm right by crowning them or tearing them up in half by the contestants. I still love Price Tag, but I hate it when they die off screen. Anyways, with that, they plan to forfeit the challenge and instead focus on saving someone's life and preventing death. Here's the moment of truth, since he talked to have a stinger where two is planning to make a new cake at stake and throw and Price mentioning it as well. Will that ever happen? Let's find out. What? You have got to be kidding me. No new cake at stake and throw? You really like to us? Jesus Christ! Lie, lie, your pants on fire! Remember when they tried to mention the new cake at stake song that in the stinger of Teapot 2? Well, they lied. Wasted seven months trying to watch a brand new cake at stake song. Carry in one, you shouldn't lie to the viewers over a new cake at stake song. However, we get something good later on Teapot 4 to onwards, don't worry. As the strongest team on Earth is prepared for seeing someone get eliminated, two announces that the price of today's cake at stake is a cheesecake, but is now covered with some broken glasses after the unfortunate incident. Eggy then tries to comfort too that the cake is undoubtedly delicious and promises to eat it, even if she is very uncertain about it. 
Continuing the elimination, there are 74,873 total votes, which is the most ever. The first contestant safe is Grassy, with 26,669 votes. With Troy, Grassy gratefully introduced himself, like he always do, and so do too. Grassy is the first contestant safe, with 26,669 votes. I'm Grassy! But it, what? <laughs> As two gave the cake to Grassy, they asked him if ever he will eat the cake. But Grassy then slides backward and threw the cake away from the roof of the hotel. Two is very upset about it. Carrying on, two then asked Snowball, as he's safe, with 13,017 votes, but then Snowball furiously refuses. He also asked Bell as well, next safe, with 10,617 votes, but politely said that she would save the cake for later. After these rejections of even the price, Robot Flower then voluntarily wants to eat the cake, which too said it's fake news for her, with a total of 6,847 votes received. She is safe from elimination, Robot Flower then smashes her head to the cake, due to not actually having a mouth. I'd eat it up too! Good news for you, because you're safe with 6,847 votes! Yikes! Basketball is next up safe, with 6,150 votes. She threatens to eat the slice but is still caught. Before the next eliminated contestant, Eddie hoped that she will be joining, with I instead just, to avoid the promise, that she with 5,977 votes, while Foldy is the second person eliminated with 5,596 votes. Foldy then is shocked by the outcome but left with good intentions for the other contestants before she finally disappears by the power of two. Still disappointing, what's the point of standing on the rooftop of the hotel where the failed computers are and teasing them by disappearing contestants by the power of two? Heck, even the hefty by A, the worst season, had a better elimination system than he thought. Foldy is out with 5,596 votes. Oh my, origami book that's called Geogami. I've been eliminated? It's been fun, guys. Disappointed! With Foldy gone, there are now 41 contestants. Marker feels bad after Foldy's elimination. I felt bad too. A disappointing elimination system that sucks in the FDIA. You know the worst season and redemption in that. Anyways, Clock mentions the contestants competing infrequently and asks, how is the season ever gonna finish? Needle is angry at who and mentions them leaving on and off in months. Who teleports the rest of the contestants somewhere else by snapping? Who welcomes everyone to the amusement park and tries to make a pun? Remote makes a comment about the empty space after Tree mentions there is nothing there. Two explains that they've been trying to make a profit with the amusement park for two years and no tickets have been sold. Fanny mentions that nobody knew that it was a thing and that there is no entertainment. Two notices Fanny is right and starts to announce the challenge knowing that the blocks were a problem. The challenge is to make an amusement park with the rest of the blocks and said they will be judging the contraptions on a scale of 1 to 10. Donut mentions that the blocks have caused nothing but death and mayhem, to which Pillow says that they should keep the blocks. Golf Ball picks up a hammer and a screw and tells her team to hurry to her factory as they are followed by Death Pact again. Yellowface makes an ad about beating Boring, but after being interrupted by Clock he reveals that he was actually talking to him and Clock says that he agrees with him and suggests to make a performance stage. Clock whispers to Bottle that it could be their chance to see Winner perform without Lose or Live. Instead, Bottle decides that Yellow Face can rehearse for the performance while the rest of the team create the stage. Yellow Face eagerly accepts the offer and begins writing a script. Ice Cube is looking at Yellow Face, who asks her if she's okay with being shattered repeatedly for the performance in which she angrily denies. Meanwhile, Basketball and Eggie try to motivate their team, but accidentally speak over one another. Basketball lets Eggie talk instead. She says that the last round was a wake up to work better as a team. Bell agrees and suggests that they try unscrambling the mess that happened last time, much to Eggie's offense. 
snowball points to their logo as the answer the team needs, but gets annoyed as it keeps moving down, right, and then inside his molecular structure. Basketball reads, the strongest team on Earth, and Snowball gets molecular structure. Basketball reads, the strongest team on Earth, and Snowball gets the idea to build a contraption to test new strength. They noticed Kirtra putting her box on the table, and Elle pities her for struggling by herself. Pointy overhears their conversation, and suggests that his team use Eggie's idea of the restaurant. Saw is excited about the idea, but Pin is not amused with it, the strongest team on Earth is not actually doing a restaurant. Pin says they could serve something like an apple. Needle then goes and gets the box. Donut then says he's salivating already. Meanwhile, Golf Ball shows, are you okay her new invention, the Bring Wave, and explains how it can bring ideas into reality through thinking about scene. Then, she puts it on Puff Ball and tells her to stare at it drawing a roller coaster so that it can come into reality, but Golf Ball warns her not to think about anything bad, as it could ruin the roller coaster. Tennis Ball reminds Golf Ball that they need to incorporate the block, which she responds to by saying the seats will be made out of blocks. She then tells Eevee to show them a tutorial on how to make the chairs racer, says that sounds boring and Golf Ball says to mess up other teams like last time. Eraser goes to leave, and then bumps into Death Pact again. He asks what they are doing there, and Lightning says say they're going to cause inter team shenanigans. Eraser mentions that he's doing that too. As he leaves, he says they are cool, and Marker says he always knew he was cool. Black Hole then says they are just building a roller coaster, but Fanny hates them because people could fall off and die. Remote then gets the idea to make a landing pad that can prevent a high fall from the roller coaster. Marker gets a sheet of team and leaves Golf Ball's factory. Meanwhile, Book mentions to just not that they are falling behind and they still have no idea for an attraction. Come on, they're the goat. The greatest team of all time, why couldn't they make a Ferris wheel or a teacup or something? Back in the episode, Pillow suggests that they should book for the attraction. Nickel says that he loves anagrams. Cake then says they should have a pile of stuff. Bumpy loves Cake's idea. Nickel asks what it means a price tag, and says that it's fun to have prizes at an amusement park. Cake thanks price tag for explaining it thoroughly. Price tag then says his idea is a million bucks. Nickel suggests that they should go to the hotel to find some things they can use as prizes. I hope we get to see those failed computers in the hotel, or else. Donut asks if Pin is okay, in which she replies that she's still second-guessing the team's idea. Needle tells Pin that she should do that later and continue building. Mark Peg mentions that they'll need a table and chairs. Pointy Crap sought to carve the blocks into chairs and a table, saying he saw an opportunity. Mark Peg reacts with a sarcastic and unamused laughter. Back at the factory, Pen, Tennis Ball, and Bryce congratulate TV for helping them build the seats, saying that he went above and beyond instead of doing something basic. Puffball gets irritated that she's way only making an average roller coaster, so she decides to think about a more exhilarating ride for her team to love her. She quickly corrects herself, saying they'll love the roller coaster. The Green Wave scans Puffball's thoughts on her new roller coaster and sounds an alarm while showcasing the words warning on the screen. Meanwhile, Eraser is taunting Teardrop and tries to zap her attraction with a zap ray he found earlier. You guessed it, the notorious team of the season, Teardrop. Is she still annoying in Teapot 3? Well, regardless, it seems like Teardrop isn't that annoying unlike last episode, she flutters her arms in response, but Eraser thinks she doesn't care. So, he kicks the blocks off Teardrop's table, but it doesn't trigger a reaction much to his ignorance. Back at the hotel, Bumpy and Nickel find random things inside the desks, such as a chalkbreaker, batteries, as well as some garbage. Nickel tells Bumpy to appreciate what he found, which still assumes he said that for the fact that he believes that or that he's a Nickel, and Nickel dejectedly agrees to both. Are you serious? The failed computers are right there inside the hotel, and you're still not letting them get some appearances? What a shame. Meanwhile, Death Pact again is finished building their landing pad as lightning, 
puts the sheet over two stacks of their blocks. As Tree is testing his, he finds it fun, but remote and black hole remind him that it's strictly for death prevention. When he makes, is finished with a restaurant. Neil remembers about the food, but Tin said that she forgot about the apple. When he decides to use Bark Egg as a replacement, since they don't have any food. Meanwhile, Bob asked Yellow Face about the performance, he said that the performance is good. Yellow Face then shows his opening dance for the performance. Bob impressed and she asked what Yellow Face can do. Yellow Face said that he sometimes worried about something, but cut it to scene where Bottle said that the performance is going to be under control to clock. Clock said that the performance is going to be great while looking at Winner. Bottle told Clock not to push anyone, and Clock, turning around, accidentally nudging Bottle and killing him. Yellow Face asked Cloudy about the stage. Cloudy said that it reminds him of sorting a collection and it fits into place. Cloudy asked if he liked it. Yellow Face advertises Cloudy. Cloudy thanked Yellow Face. Robot Flower said that her team will win the challenge. Basketball doubted if two just can knock over the stack. Snowball said that two can knock it over if they can prove themselves. Basketball felt that the attraction is not ready. Snowball thinks that no one likes his idea and punched Bell. Basketball said that she have an idea. Snowball thinks that his team will just clobbering Bell. Basketball said that she'll need some string. She has a string in her lap at the hotel, she'll blew the rest of the stack. Robot Flower said she'll be right back to grab the string. She runs away. And outside of the park, Two said Robot Flower runs to the hotel, they said hello and goodbye to her. Two announces that the sun is beginning to set, they suggested all the teams meet them back at the amusement park, and the judging of all teams' attractions will begin tonight. At the factory, Golf Ball finished making the seat for her team's attraction. Golf Ball thanked Puff Ball for visualizing her team's roller coaster. Golf Ball then checks the preview. According to the preview result, the roller coaster will be hyper crazy with a 10,000 out of 100 dangerous reading. Golf Ball said that the roller coaster she think will be dangerous and it is outrageously ridiculous. She said that they don't have time to restart and she think Puff Ball has ruined their idea. Tennis Ball upset and said that they don't have time to make another roller coaster due to Two's announcement. Fry takes it easy and he suggested to take the brain with and upload it into the park. At the hotel, Oak think they can't just take the garbage onto the park. Bill mentions things besides the garbage, while Haley makes a sarcastic comment about the garbage. When Nickel heard Two's announcement, he suggested get back outside with the stuff they already had. Robot Flower runs upstairs to get the string. Nickel commands his team to grab the garbage and Robot Flower. Pillow jokes about this, asking why he said to grab the same thing twice. As Robot Flower is running downstairs, Pompey holds the string, just not as tracked by Robot Flower, just in time before the sunset. Come on, Wack Brothers! We're at the hotel and still, not even a single, failed computer to show me. What a bummer. Robot Flower arrives back to her team, with a string of basketball thanks and accolades her. Basketball gets to work on the attraction. Now it is a modified dungeon game. Here's the greatest part of the episode, and you'll just enjoy this clip. Snowball loves the attraction so much that he punches Grassy really far away. Hi Grassy, hi! Yes! I love it! I love it so much! I just wanna hit something! <gasps> Oh my god! I'm going! I'm going! I'm going! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! This time time! This time time! This time time! This time time! Wow! Let's do that again! No! 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 Basketball gets mad at Snowball and Hulk and to use the punching game next time for punching. Now that are you okay? Is that at the amusement park? Golf ball tells Ten that the button on the Greenwood will create a roller coaster. She clicks on the button and it spawns the roller coaster that turns out to be dangerous. Golf Ball and Puff Ball are surprised about the outcome, and Pen gets the block seats onto the right as he places them onto the ride. Black Hole saw the roller coaster made by Are You OK and is shocked that it's become dangerous. He knew that Death Pact again made the right fall just preventing death for the challenge. 
two announces that the sun had nearly set, but when her doubted that it'll take about an hour for them. Much to their dismay, the sun sets down, and Winner said they will never doubt you again, only officially declaring that after the sun sets, for a second time, after the sun comes back up. To ask are you okay about their attraction they have created? Golf Ball said her team made a roller coaster for their park. Puff Ball said that the blocks are the seat for the roller coaster. Pillow said that you should ride on the roller coaster. Haley said that was a good idea and she hoping, are you okay lose? Well Haley, I don't hope, are you okay to lose? But I hope, dare drop to lose, and Pillow said that they also die. Two love the idea and asks are you okay to join them on the ride? Two, Golf Ball, Rise and Ten, put their own seats. Two, ask Tough Ball to push the lever to ride the roller coaster. Tough Ball pushes the lever and the ride starts running. Two, at first, like the ride. When the ride got to the main part, Golf Ball, Rise, Ten, and Two Scream. They were then thrown away from the ride and sent into the free fall. They were saved by Death Pact against Trampoline. Two said that the Trampoline was quite fun. Two gave Death Pact again, mistaken for Are You Okay? Ten out of ten, for the amazing Trampoline love bouncing on it. Two gave Are You Okay? Five out of ten, because the roller coaster was exhilarating but dangerous. And the small it. Two goes to the strongest team on Earth's attraction and asks what the attraction is. Snowball reckons they are weak, then two responds that they are not so weak. Belle tried to punch the block suspended from a string, but she barely can punch it. She said she doesn't know if two is up to the challenge. Two thought the attraction looks hard. Two, using his power, punched the block so hard it flew into the distance. Two said that the strongest team on Earth's attraction is a strong game for a strong team. It's simple and they like it. Grassy returns to the park, announcing his return. Snowball puts him on the attraction, replacing the block that was thrown away. Snowball said that there's a whole new test to try. Two don't know how they feel about the new element, but they love what they played. Who gave the strongest team on Earth 7 out of 10? Who goes to the S attraction to judge it? Cloudy said that his team created a stage out of blocks for their performance area. Who said that if it's for a performance area, they'll need to see a performance. Winner says they have yellow face ready to perform, but Clock interrupts them and says that it's Winner who's performing. Yellow face is shocked that he couldn't perform and was the only person rehearsing. Clock states that they couldn't miss a chance to see Winner perform, Livin thinks this will make them win. It can also help them re-enter the mainstream. However, Winner wasn't ready for that. And we don't want that, we wanted Yellow Face to perform, and all of a sudden, Clock presented Winner to perform a solo show to two. They clap until realizing there's no one on stage. Winner walks away from the stage and Clock approaches them, asking where are they going. Winner didn't agree to Clock's plan at all and tells him not to push them to do something when they're not ready. Clock stated that he wasn't trying to force them, but Winner thinks they'd rather be alone. With no performance taking place for the S, and that they just constructed an empty stage, who gave the S a 0 out of 10. What a fatal flaw! Just because one person isn't ready to be on stage, doesn't mean you have to force them. Yay! Woohoo! And there's no one on stage. Bomber. Huh? Winner, where are you going? I didn't agree to this at all, Clock. Don't push me to do something like this when I'm not ready. I wasn't trying to force you, I just... I think I'd rather be by myself for now. Oh. Well, no performance ended up taking place, and you've just constructed an empty stage. Nothing really to do here. Sorry guys, but that's a 0 out of 10. Oh, then you guys better definitely give me whatever you're smoking, because I don't see a face or hands! Is it, is it a scary face? Does it look like this? Ooh. However, who isn't that upset or annoyed when they gave the S a 0 out of 10? They're nice, unlike me phone 4 back in 2018. It's a 0, Paintbrush. Just accept it. Not everything needs an explanation. Yes, it's done! Ah! Um, what did you just do? Oh, so now we suddenly need explanations? 
I didn't mean it! Amazing. Then it was rigged. Just because you drew something like the Mona Lisa painting, you still get a zero out of ten. That was stupid. Blame me phone four for that. And on top of that, Paintbrush got eliminated and humiliated unfairly because they burned every contestant's drawing. Back to Teapot! If the S gets at least redemption 1 out of 10, well they did build the stage, it wouldn't be that bad. If the S got a 0 out of 10, then Teardrop better get a 0 out of 10. To ask Teardrop what she had working on, she threw her block to 2 and they asked, what did she want them to do that? Eraser takes that block and throw it, destroying her stack. 2 is amazed by seeing that Teardrop made a fun carnival game. Two gave tears from five out of ten. Here, sir, why would you do that? Let's see what you've been working on, Teardrop. Huh? W what do you want me to do with this? Who cares? Give me that. <laughs> oh, how fun! And you did this all by yourself, Teardrop? What a fun carnival game! I'm gonna give that a five out of ten. Golf Wall told Eraser that he was meant to hurt her chances, not helping her. Exactly. Even though Teardrop isn't annoying, and if you thought Teardrop is the annoying contestant of the season, its second annoying contestant of the season goes to Eraser. Why? Because he releases the zap gun and tries to shoot Teardrop, but failed. Eraser then chases her. And if Eraser or Teardrop makes the just not get a zero out of ten, I really despise this episode. To ask just not about the garbage, Hook puts the garbage onto the table. Cake said that these are a bunch of prizes. He doesn't think that it's an amusement park if there's no prizes. Two said those have almost no value. Price tag asked if they want a value. They jumped onto the garbage and give it a value of $30, and two sees that it makes the value clear. Two gave just not three out of ten. Naily said price tag did a good job. Thank you, Taggy. You saved the day. This is why I'm your favorite character of the season! Eraser is still chasing Teardrop while trying to shoot her, but accidentally shoots Ten, TV, and Fanny to death. Wow, just wow, Eraser killing his best friend Ten. That's just mean! Marker saw them die and lies down at the trampoline. She said that his team considered Marker's death prevented. Two goes to teammate S attraction. They said if they got above zero out of ten, they'll beat the S. Katie thinks they'll enjoy what they put together and two says everything she puts her mind to is always fantastic. Two pats Katie and hurt their hand. When Donut tried to speak, he got bumped by Teardrop. Eraser releases the zap gun and tries to shoot her, but Teardrop avoids it and shoots teammate S attraction instead and it disappears. Needless surprised and saw begins to scream. Two gave teammates zero out of ten because they had nothing to show them thanks to Eraser and Teardrop. Here's the real problem, they're both annoying on this episode. Their team should be disqualified enough for elimination for what they did to teammates. Here's the moment of truth, we'll get this tie, breaker and beat teammates. Sorry Katie, I know the S is much better. Clock asked to what the tie breaker will be, since the S and T mates both got a zero out of ten. Yellowface hopes that the tie breaker won't be a performance while still angry at Clock for not letting him perform. Agreed, Yellowface was ready to perform, not winner. I'm so mad that he caused his team to lose. Clock apologizes to him and promises to do better next time by not pushing anyone and going clockwise to his other teammates. Two said it seems hardly unfair to the other teams to give both teams another shot, and does remember Clock talking about the game is going so slowly. The flashback shown that Clock said if there's 41 contestants and they complete the game slowly, he asked how they are gonna ever possibly finish the competition. Two figures out a way to speed up the competition is to have two teams up for elimination. Marker gets it because they are two. Well, I didn't expect that, this is new. The episode ends with two saying that two teams are up for elimination, but the viewers only vote one of the contestants of two teams. They said that the contestants with the fewest votes on teammates and the S will both eliminate it. Okay, this is a tough decision. You only have to vote one contestant, not vote for one each team, because we're already at 100,000 votes. 
And the sad part is there's no recommended characters by Patreon users, and they just removed the end credits with recommended characters, cameos only. The problem about this episode is not just the failed computers and the exitors are absent again, but both are you okay and Aaron Rock should have been up for elimination for what they did to teammates. I think Aaron Rock is a notorious team of the season. Yellowface introduces Eggy and Bell to the stage. Price tag, most likely, Black Hole, Katie and Grassy are excited. Yellowface said that the show is where they must eat dude's glassy top cake. Grassy said, glassy. Eggy didn't want to eat that cake. Marker came up and he thinks she calls him, which Eggy denies. Marker says that he is here to prevent death and tells her not to eat the cake, as she'll die. Bell asked him what to do because they told you they did it. Marker says that he'll do it for them. Marker ate the cake and screams in pain as he is dying, much to price tags, grassies, Katie's and, most likely, Black Hole's dismay. Do you know? Most of the love characters like price tag, grassy and Katie are here. Why not them? There, I reviewed T Top 3. Now, let's review T Top 4. I expect in this thumbnail that David and the Exiters are returning for the first time in two years since T Top 1, which this episode tops out all the rest. But instead, we get something different. There's a chance that there's a new cake at stake in Tro. There's a chance for our favorite characters die on screen. It better not be winner. There's a chance to have new characters talking besides the failed computers. Let's just give it a go. Let's review it. And what that means, ladies and gentlemen, is that tomorrow... I think a way to speed up this competition is to have two teams up for elimination! So, sorry folks. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Pillow and Cake are seen at the beginning of the episode playing Doyle Chess on top of Are You OK's roller coaster. Nickel then asks about what's going on. Pillow responds, saying that she was teaching Cake how to play Doyle Chess, with Cake also saying that Doyle Chess is really fun. Cake says that Nickel can play Doyle Chess with him next, but Book says that she thought she was going to go next. Nickel then questions why they are on top on the roller coaster. The train of the roller coaster then begins moving with yellow face on it. Pillow dodges the roller coaster by jumping, taking Book and Cake along with him. Nickel, however, is knocked out from the roller coaster. He then lands here too, making them exclaim that they are rich. Because they're able to afford a gumball from a gumball machine. Chewing on the gum they bought from the gumball machine where Nickel was stuck in. They explain that teammates and the S are both up for elimination, and Fries tells them to spit out that gum and be a respectable host. Q then blows a bubble and says that it won't be a problem anymore. Bottle then requests that the spot to do cake at stake would be at her team stage since they built it. Q agrees to this and cuts a ribbon, meaning that it's the new cake at stake spot. Just when Bottle almost gets the S onto the stage, Two tells Bottle that it's a terrible idea and that they mustn't do it. This causes Bottle to get upset and cry. This character is very unique when she cries. Not only she cries, but her tears is inside the Bottle, not outside the Bottle. Two comforts and explains to her that teammates must have their cake at stake first, because the S at least built something while teammate S building was destroyed. It was all still a racer and Teardrop's fault for that. Their team should have been up for elimination because they should have been disqualified for what they did to teammates. Two comes up to Gramophone so they can play the new cake at stake song. Finally! People were begging the new cake at stake intro since the steamer of Team Talk 2. Thank the Lord! Hey, two! When you pick a cake, decorate and take it to the players who are safe. That's how you know it's cake instead. The song playing is titled, A2. The song was made by Anthony Koss, and it was animated by Ivan Maslow. Clark Peg and the rest of teammates are all very cheerful before their elimination. Tim questions why, and Donut attempts to talk right before the cake at stake as it statistically increases his chances to be safe first. This fails, as Tim starts to speak but is cut off by two stating she is first safe. 
Donut is upset as Pliny, Dwarf Greg, Katie and Needle are declared safe. Donut and Saw are in the bottom two and are both fearful of being eliminated. Two reveals Donut is safe, and the entire team is set to see Saw leave. Saw asks two by how many votes she was eliminated. They say it was exactly eight, a not coincidence. The S is invited onto the stage. Yellow Face is excited to be on the stage, intended for him, and since he talked right before the elimination, he is safe. Winner, Rocky, Clock, and Donald are also declared safe. Cloudy and Ice Cube are also afraid of being in the bottom two, but it is revealed that Cloudy is eliminated. Two waves his hand in front of Saw and Cloudy and they disappear. Every time they do that, they keep disappointing, failed computer fans. To mourn Saw's elimination, teammates go to the funny clenchy and Saw smell together. This is us once winner dies, for the first time ever, we'll be talking about that later once the top 6 releases and we'll make a review, for the both of them. Katie informs the team that the funny clamp species has three lives. Immediately, Cake flies into Barf Bag, and her barf spills onto the plant, making it lose one life. Then, the bubble from Dude's gum pops on the plant, and it loses another life. Bottle then trips on Baby, spilling out her concoction onto the plant, killing it. Bottle is said her concoction, spilled in pin, is said the last memory of Saw was destroyed. Fanny is angered, as that was the last funny plant in Boiki. Two comforts her, stating there were seven remaining funny plants, each scattered across seven different biomes, all down to their last life. Two then makes the challenge to protect the funny plant in a specific biome. They give out a hat with paper slips so that each team can choose their biome. Marker pulls out jungle for death pack against biome, snowball cheeks and pulls snowy tantra for the strongest team on Earth's biome and Eggie scolds him, Winter pulls out her space for the S. Once Winter said, this isn't good. At first, Winter's going to die this episode, Pointy pulls Yoilum for teammates, Hook pulls the desert for just not, are you okay pulls David Lund and Teardrop pulls the real world, making Teardrop horrified at it. Once Teardrop is horrified, we have a huge advantage over them to make Teapot better. Two gives all contestants race with scalp ball tilt, capable of transporting them to their biomes. Tennis ball compliments her for her new technology. Dwarf Greg asks who how the bracelet would take them to their location and who tells her to put it on. She puts it on and is transported to Yoiland where she is excited to be at. She however starts freaking out when she notices that none of her teammates are with her. The bracelet falls off of her arm and she is transported back. Golf Ball tells Dwarf Greg to just take off the bracelet if she wants to leave. Basketball jokingly asks Golf Ball if she wants to join her Shake Hater Club, and in response she quickly puts on her bracelet and leaves. She tells the contestants to put on their bracelets to go to their biomes and protect their funny plants, with the first two teams to lose theirs, beating up for elimination. She compliments them for making a challenge for protecting plant life, with Grassy agreeing. Robot Flower tries to be appreciative too, but Tree tells her that he didn't know if she could be considered a plant. Two puts a bracelet on Tree's torso and he's immediately transported to the jungle. Soon after, his team arrives. While Death Pact again is in the jungle, a cherry introduces itself as Cherry Jr. the Orphan suddenly appears, first time in two years since birthday cake. In the FP30, we finally get to see him talk for the first time ever. Hey everybody, I want you to say hi to our very newest model. Hi hi, yes it's me, Cherry Jr. the Orphan! Wait a minute. Uh, hey guys, does that look kind of familiar to you? But wait, does that character look familiar from last time? They look like Lightning Cherry to me. Surprising remote. Lightning goes ahead to pat the funny plant, calling it cute, before accidentally zapping the plant on Cherry Jr., causing his team to neglect him by taking off his bracelet, since he failed to prevent death. It is so cute! Oh jeez, whoops! Ouchie, ouchie! I'm transforming into Lightning Cherry! Yeah! Oh, I knew I recognized him! See? I knew he's actually a Lightning Cherry! Strongest team on Earth appears in the snowy tundra with Snowball enjoying it only because he's made out of snow while Eggie just distastes the place since it's cold but they are forced to protect their funny plant in the cold because of Snowball's ego. 
basketball asked for an idea on how to warm up the sunny plant and Bell has an idea to ring her bell to make the sunny plant warmer since sound waves generate heat. This solution works great as the plant then begins to grow and warm up. Once grassies start shivering, that seems predictable since last year when I made a spin-off called the DFBI show where grassy was shivering in his dream. That at the desert, Philo and Kate are playing Royal Chess again. While Cake was playing, look correct Cake about the name, not being a truck piece, but rather called the Freezebrick Super Fan. Nickel then reminds his team that they have a funny plan to protect while they were playing. Phil mentions that playing is fun, but baby sitting a plant is not, but Cook tells her that Nickel is right. Nailey checks the plant and says it's getting really dry, and Bryce Tag has an idea, saying they should split up to fetch water across the desert, to which everyone agrees. Before leaving, Philo swaps cakes pieces on the oil chest game. At first, I'm hoping that the just not can pull a team play 12 challenges in a row before up for elimination. I hope this happens, because everyone loves this team so much, in my opinion. That with are you okay? Eraser asks Tennis Ball where Golf Ball went, with him responding that she already transported to David Blunt. Tough Ball was eager to come along, but Tennis Ball told her that she couldn't participate in the challenge due to the events of last episode. As her team equips their bracelets and leave, Lightning comes in to confess to Tough Ball about his exclusion while going to Ice Cube, another neglected member of her team, because she could be in risk of evaporating in space after a certain amount of time, leaving her vengeful. Meanwhile, when Bell is almost done warming up the funny plant to full health, her bracelet falls off, and she is teleported back home. Robot Flower suggests using Touchstone Telephone to bring her back, but Iggy responds, saying that Bell is not the type of gal to be wired up all the time. While the funny plant starts to die out, they start to think about Plan B, having Snowball to light Grassy on fire with a matchstick, leaving Grassy be worried and frightened. Oh no, does that mean Grassy will be the first time screaming and dying on screen for the first time in almost 12 years? Maybe they should put off their bracelet to go back home and give it to Bell so they can do the warm-up again instead of murdering and mistreating Grassy so badly. Snowball is a cheater, by the way. I suddenly have an idea in mind. I'm Grassy? Oh, hell no! He wouldn't! Okay. Yes, it seems to be floating in space in their space pods, having a gamma ray blast them off, but barely any effect happens since the space pods are pretty protective. Take that gamma ray! You almost kill Winner! It's like the third time this happens! That's awesome! Because, look! That super distant quasar is about to shoot a deadly gamma ray in our direction! <laughs> See, because of the protective space pod, that just tickled. Take that, Quasar! Nice try, asshole! But not enough to make sure Clock and Rocky doesn't become nauseous. Then Rocky vomits and he's drowning. Winner mentions that they can see oil from there and wonders what's going on down there. Teammates arrives at oil and having barfed egg, excited enough to grab the oil berry, but not to eat it and rather save it as a souvenir. But sadly, according to Katie, the only collector isn't present anymore, so they can't have the chance to get it from her. They check out the funny plant as it seems to grow thanks to the fertile soil, leaving Donut amazed as it grows in real time. Pointy is impressed with Pin's knowledge about plants, as she's been reading oil biology. We can then see Teardrop in the real world as she trips down on the window, taking care of her plant that seems to be growing, presumably due to the rain. This notorious team better be up for elimination, any humans can destroy that plant! Are you okay, Beards and David Lund, with golf ball, fries, and tennis ball remembering the times they have been there? Tennis spooked since it's his first time traveling there. Questioning the size of the Davidians as the day that they have been interacting with was a smaller version, Golf Ball then explains to Penn that most Davids are that size and the day that they saw way back then was simply a smaller variant of the species. Tennis Ball finds the funny Clem sitting next to one of the Davids, with Golf Ball having TV calculate the reverberation units of the Davids saying, Aw oh, seriously? 
Frank seems to be sarcastically fearful, but is being serious, if that's a big deal, which Golf Ball answers it is. She explains that if they provoke the Davids, they will say, Ah, seriously? In an extremely loud volume, compared to when they were in the sky, making the plan, break and destroy everyone's earthworms. Golf Ball and Tennis Ball goes to all the lips of Pen, Eraser, and Fries, since they were about to say something negative about the Davids. The David was turning around until they clicked, having Golf Ball relieved. Nelly asks Bumpy if he's fine with dying just for the challenge, in which he kills him when he said yes by throwing him onto the cactus, and gets water from it as they have water inside of them. Nelly uses the water for the funny plant, with Price Tag and Nickel using two fancy water bottles they found from some abandoned fans. Hook wasn't able to find any water, but uses herself as a poem to make the plant feel good about themselves, making them grow some more. Meanwhile, Cake goes to find some water, mistakenly some from an abandoned yellow face skeleton from a long lost oil city. The skeleton is cursed, as Hook, Nailey, and Nickel didn't remind him about it. If their team is up for elimination to 14 top 13 instead of Teardrop, I'm going to be really pissed, because they'll never act responsibly to their viewers who love mostly the Just Not. Back in Wookie, Lightning requests it in, Tough Ball, Ice Cube, and Bell could do something like charades. Tough Ball still wanted to contribute to her team, so she asks if Lightning still had his bracelet, convincing him to put it back on. Although Lightning still had his bracelet, he is reluctant to put it on as he didn't want it over a system felt that his team intentionally wanted him to stay back home. Puffball takes that chance to try and steal Lightning's bracelet so that she could go to the jungle herself and shake things up. Every time Puffball attempts to grab the bracelet, Lightning zaps her in defense. Who notices the fight in amusement? Puffball comes up a better motive by grabbing Bell onto the roller coaster. As the roller coaster moves rapidly, Bell's string cannot go any further, causing Puffball to slingshot it towards Lightning, in which she hits him and steals the bracelet. Then she is transported to the jungle in an effort to sabotage Death Pact again on behalf of her team. She then presents the walls they built around the funny plant as its castle, showing that no dangers can enter it, but Puffball simply flies into the castle. She tells Black Hole to use his flying abilities to pull Puffball out of their castle. Black Hole tries to do this, and as a result some of Castle's walls are sucked up. Black Hole didn't want to risk killing anybody, and then Tree is reminded about their main goal of preventing death. As Puffball is about to eat the funny plant, Remote reminds her that if she kills any of the funny plants herself, her team will be up for elimination. Sammy taunted Puffball for two's rule stopping her, but Puffball thought of a new idea. She takes off the bracelet and brings Ice Cube to the jungle with her. Then, Puffball drops Ice Cube into the ground where the funny plant was located. Remote questions her motives, and Puffball explains that the funny plant is absorbing water from Ice Cube instead of the soil. This would mean that Ice Cube could shrink and die in mere minutes. She puts Death Pact against Holes to the test by giving them the option to either cut their funny plant to halt Ice Cube's absorption, putting them up for elimination, or letting Ice Cube die so that they will avoid elimination. She complimented Puffball's cleverness as she gave them a tough choice. Puffball takes off the bracelet and leaves the jungle. So here's the worst part about this episode, the most inarguably bleak one. Cake returns with water from the ancient yellow face skeleton. Price Tag tries warns him, but it is too late as Cake gives the water to the funny plant. Nickel told Cake that any water that came in contact with an ancient yellow face skeleton was cursed. This causes the funny plant to shatter into small bits. Cake frantically tries to put the pieces back together in a futile effort. Two shows up, frightening the team. Nelly asks how they got to the desert, and Two explains that they have a color-changing bracelet to teleport to any biome they wanted, impressing Price Tag. Two tells just not that they were up for elimination as their funny plan was the first to die. This was the worst possible thing that could have happened for everyone who wanted Teardrop to be up for elimination. Instead of Teardrop, the notorious team that shouldn't be up for elimination, they instead gave us the opposite by letting everyone's favorite team to be up for elimination instead. 
Cake apologizes to his team for letting that happen, but Brooke comforts him by saying that they were ones who didn't remind Cake about the skeleton. Then, Cake is shocked that he went from 5 points ahead of Pillow to 30 points behind in Yoel Chess. Pillow says that was one of the consequences of being cursed by Yellow Face's skeleton. It seems like a worse dynamic of Vandy from Classic Tetris Monthly. It's Sidnet's first ever super kill screen loss, but like a thousand times worse. Jarrell's looking to get that 1.2 into it was on top of an 29. And here we shade. go. The race to level go. 39 is Wait, on. Cake, Efficiency no. matters. Price tag, what's wrong? Cake, don't you know? Any water that touches a yellow face skeleton is... <gasps> oh, no. What? I had no idea. It's okay, though. We can repair the pieces. Oh, no. Is Sidney going to be able to do can't. this? Ah! What the heck was Dude, that? How did you get here? The desert is our biome. I have a color changing bracelet. Oh my so word. To whichever biome Jesus I hardware Ooh, just turned that's off. That's actually pretty neat. Yeah, it is. Golf Ball's inventions are so... always so nifty. <laughs> the sad news is that your team just not is the first to let your funny plant die. So you're all up for elimination. See? Oh no, it is gonna to get a fall oh, short man. by one so line. Sorry, have lost this track of the life. lines. No, Kate, and fell that. short on by one line. For not reminding you about that yellow face skeleton. Also, whoa, pillow. When did I go from five points ahead of you in your oil chest to thirty points behind? That's just one of the consequences of getting cursed by yellow face's skeleton. This might be the worst teapot episode of 2023, in my opinion. Why do you ask? Because I think most just not fans wanted to let this team to become the next team plan from the FD Life 12 challenges in a row completed until the next episode and they should be up for elimination since people besides just not fans are tired of it doing the same thing. No, we can't do that anymore. The infuriated part is to hear from the notorious team being safe over and over again, especially when they didn't get disqualified back in Team Pop 3. Make it team pot the same episode every year. No offense. Oh, Meanwhile, in the real world, no. here's what they show on the window sliding down to one of her family members, presumably having a family reunion, according to the text. This is where things get insane besides cheaters and prevention cutting back and forth since they're both in trouble. The next number of scenes cuts back and forth between the strongest team of Earth. A death pact again. Grassy is shown to be set on fire as Snowball looking with a match off screen. Although their funny plan was warm again, Basketball was worried of their plan being dangerous. Robot Flower notices Grassy's bracelet burning, but Eggy assures that is it'll be fine. Eggy asks if they have any other backup plans if Grassy's bracelet completely burns into ashes, but Snowball didn't have any. Then, she asks Robot Flower for ideas because she was the same species as the funny plant, to which Robot Flower said that tree didn't consider her as a plant. Meanwhile, in the jungle, Remote attempts to pull Ice Cube out of the ground, but she can't do this as Top Ball inserted Ice Cube really deep and it exerted 110% of Remote's battery. Marker suggests to take the bracelet off Ice Cube's leg, but Fanny mentions that if Ice Cube teleports back home, she could not look into the ground and suffocate. She suggests that they have to decide between letting either Ice Cube or the funny plant die. Then, Black Hole makes the final decision to kill the funny plant to save Ice Cube's life, as preventing death was far more important than losing. She mentioned that they need a way to cut the plant, and Marker gets the idea to grab two scissors that they used to cut the ribbon earlier in the episode. She happily tells Marker to go and grab the scissors. Marker takes off his bracelet and successfully collects the scissors. Grassy's bracelet is burned by the fire and teleports back to Boiki. Unbelievable, first time Grassy's screaming and dying on screen after 12 years. Three, two, one! Ah, it's so hot! Ah, ah, I'm on fire! Oh! Okay, it's not over yet. Hey, yeah. As Marker runs into him, catching on fire himself. Although in pain, Marker manages to put on his bracelet to come back to the jungle. Tree congratulates Marker for getting the scissors in the nick of time and collects the scissors from him. Tree uses the scissors to cut their funny plant and save Ice Cube in the process. Tree shows up and tells Death Pact again that they're the second team up for elimination and Black Hole, Tree, and Remote accept the loss as a necessary sacrifice. 
Sammy yelled at them for not noticing that Marker was on fire, and the entire Rainbow's catch is on fire from it. Two quickly takes off their bracelet to leave. The episode ends as two tells the viewers to vote to save one contestant from just not a death pact again, having one vote total. The contestants with a few votes from each team would be eliminated. Wow, just wow. The worst teapot episode of the year, in my opinion. A huge advantage over here for it. But regardless, the best episode ever when it comes to cameos and characters talking. A car is shown with a text, but what is the fate of the five remaining funny plants? Along with footage of said funny plants below the text. Shortly afterwards, a montage of scenes showcasing the five other teams is shown, beginning with the strongest team on Earth. The team's funny plan is shown encased in a block of ice due to there being no suitable heat source to keep it warm. Basketball and Eggie complain about it prior to the flower breaking off from the stem. Afterwards, Are You OK is shown with the racer complaining about the David's bad smell. The nearby David promptly takes offense at this comment and looks around before staring intently at them and yelling, Aw, seriously? At all of them, with a resulting shock of killing the funny plant. The S is shown again, with Rocky barfing on the walls of his protective capsule once again, creating a lens that could refract gamma ray shot by the Quasar. Just as Clock explains the phenomenon to Yellowface, the Quasar, which is 2,763 light years away, as later explained by Gaby, shoots a gamma ray onto Rocky's capsule. The lip splits the gamma ray burst into three beams, one destroys the S. S Funny Plant and the other two head down to Earth. One destroys teammate S Funny Plant, freeing up Donut, the other kills, tears rocks Funny Plants. Really? Now they destroyed their plant, but it's too late. This is so flat out blatant. Afterward, the Funny Plant species became extinct, as explained by Bottle. Who then celebrates both the rainforest fire and the funny plant's extinction before congratulating themselves on their management ability and then waving the viewers goodbye. Oh come on! You're literally not paying attention to detail, acting responsibly, listening and taking things seriously. Let's do pros and cons about the two episodes. Let's start off with the FDIT Top 3 first, with pros. As for the FDIT Top 3, Grassy was the first to be safe. Okay, the underrated and overhated character really deserves it. I'm a huge fan of him for this team. Second, winner almost died, again. At least three died, otherwise there's no more contestants who competed Teapot without dying once. Third, Grassy finally screams, except he's happy when he's falling or in any amusement park. Fourth, Price Tag helped the team, interesting I know. And fifth, Black Bull, Baby, Grassy and Price Tag, some of my favorite characters are in the stinger. Well, that all. And now, let's talk about the FDIT Top 4 with the pros. Grassy was both shivering and screaming, first time ever since 12 years of the show. The last episode, he screamed excitedly, Grassy! This time, his scream seems like he's not very happy. And as for his shiver, wow, that's predictable I know since last year. Second, winner almost dies, again, by a gamma ray blast this time. If winner gets killed by someone, this makes me send someone to Madagascar to be with the limbers, singing, move it, move it. It's one of one. If anything happened to that winner, I would kill that person. I would literally put them in a crate and ship them to Madagascar to be with the lemurs so they can sing, move it, move it. So that's how important that yeah. is to me, Marvin. Well, I did watch the next episode that went horribly wrong to them. We'll be talking to that in the next review. Third, don't forget the all new cake at Steak and Trove. Fourth, cameos are here, including new characters like Burrito and Water Bottle. And first time in two years since BFB30, we get to see Lightning Cherry and Water Bottle talk. Which makes this episode the best one yet when it comes to recommended character cameos. Fifth, Pillow is doing alright, she deserves it. She's doing the challenge a little bit different. 
six, Glottle's crying expression has been revealed that she cries inside the bottle rather than outside the bottle. And seventh, the return to David London Doyle since the FDIA, the second to worst season with some redemption in my opinion. But we'll be talking to the exiters later. Now, let's talk about the cons for both episodes. Let's start off with a main five flaws from both episodes. First of all, the recovery center is present in T-Pot 3, but didn't uncover the first word, and as for T-Pot 4, it never showed up. Second, the elimination system that sucked in the FDIA, they still never show us the place. It could be the hotel, it could be the TLC, it could be the exit, who knows. Third, Teardrop, this team is still not up for elimination, as for T-Pot 3, both Teardrop and are you okay should have been disqualified for literally destroying teammates' attraction, so the S and teammates are both safe. They show their fans team that everyone can root against Teardrop. Remember when Snowball is holding a matchstick to lit grassy on fire? Well, speaking of, if match was in teammates' side. This is where she has to say. So that leaves us with just teammates left. As long as you log it above a zero, then you'll beat the S. I'm sure you'll enjoy what we put together too. Of course, KT. Everything you put your mind to is always fantastic. Ow. So we put together- Ow! Hey! I've got you now, TD! Mr. Eraser! Teardrop! No! Well, since you have nothing to show me, this also gets a zero out of ten. Sad with a capital S. Two teams got a zero, so what'll the tiebreaker be, two? Hopefully not a performance. <laughs> Sorry, Yellowface. I promise to do better going clockwise. Well, it hardly seems fair to the other teams to give you both another shot. And earlier, Clock, you did point out this game is going so slowly. If there's 41 contestants and we compete this infrequently, how are we going to ever possibly finish this competition? So, I think a way to speed up this competition is to have two teams up for elimination! <laughs> oh, I get it, cuz you're two! Viewers, two teams are up for elimination, but you only get one vote total, so vote one contestant you want to have- No! Match, you just gotta accept the outcome, even if you don't like it. Here's the footage! Ow. So we put together- Ow! Hey! I've got you now, TD! <laughs> Eraser! Teardrop! No! Uh, oh, gee, I guess you're right. Then- Are you okay? I'm Teardrop up for elimination. See what Match wants, Match is gonna get. Oh! And as for T-Pot 4, she didn't annoy anyone. She didn't test someone's plan. Nothing. She sits there in the ring and doing nothing. Well, just faithfully, I love you, but I'll take that back about talking trash and calling this team notorious. It's not the team that I'm tired of them being safe. It's because the voting icon is missing. Because I knew Teardrop is safe in T-Pot 5. I know people were thinking, oh you were just furious because just not is up for elimination. That's when you know, it's time for the government to interfere. It's not the ideal solution, but it is a better solution than this. Because it's clear that because gambling is so monetizable in games, and because these ratings boards are being lobbied by the executives who run the ratings boards and the organizations that are supposed to be watchdogs for video game consumers, you're going to see skewed results like this. This is the bullshit that will keep happening unless an entity of higher power interferes and enacts regulations that can act as overwatch for a games industry that refuses to act responsibly and regulate itself. Fun fact, not everyone loves it, just not. Just because I say that doesn't mean this team will be safe every time until T-Pot 13. I have to teach a lesson on this one. Some people love this team so much when it comes to favorites. And yes, I'm not adding just not being up for elimination as a grown or a con. Some people hate this team in their opinion to tell you the truth. For the fifth, none of the exiters and the failed computers never appeared either. As for T-Pot 4, you thought the exiters are finally back. Well, we got clickbaited by Giant Davis. These count, but not really. Now, let's talk about flaws for individual episodes for now. Let's talk about T-Pot 3. 
first, for T.C. Price tag, died off screen, again. Among the characters I like wish was Grassy and Puffball. Rustling I know, but Grassy was on fire on screen in T.C. 4 regardless, it's way better than T.C. Second, they removed the recommended character staff at the end credits, instead it's just Terry talking about the upcoming episode, which is one of the most long and boring end credits ever. Third, let's talk about the S first, instead of Yellow Face performing, since he's good at. Clock literally causes his team lose by letting Winter to perform instead. This would've been nice if they gave him a 1 out of 10. Or better yet, disqualified two teams so the S and teammates are sick. Fourth, speaking of teammates, it was not fair that Deirdre and Eraser are both the most annoying contestants destroyed teammates' attraction. Their team should have been up for elimination, but nope. They refused to disqualify and let teammates and the SD up for elimination. Blatant, right? Fifth, just not should have built a teapot ride, this should have been called Teapot Ride. But no, they ran out of ideas, I don't know why. Now, time for Teapot 4. First of all, Snowball cheated because he wanted the snowy Tundra, and second of all, he just burned Grassy for no reason. He could've go back home and let Belle wear this bracelet back to do the warm-up. If her bracelet falls off, go back home and put it back, and doing the same process over and over again. But no, they burned Grassy instead. Third, I just don't get it why Lightning's arms look like normal, but when you hug him, high-five him, or even shake his hands, you'll get electrocuted. Fourth, the same thing happens when Marker was on fire, and yes, his knees is on fire and touched the ground, but no fire propagation, only at the jungle. Fifth, Tree is so stupid that he cut his plant instead of killing Ice Cube, come on. It's a challenge, you shouldn't done that. And sixth, like I said about the first individual flaw of this episode like Snowball, for an example, Nailey should go back home and recover Bombi and try to kill him by exploding the cactus, in the process of getting the plant to grow by doing the same process over and over again. But no. People were outraged about their favorite team, being up for elimination instead of their team, that they don't like. A few people may say it's not Cake's fault. It was the producers. That'll mean that they're actually breaking the fourth wall. And that's not the point. Let's make Teapot 3 and 4 feel better, shall we? The failed debuters and the exiters should give some chances to appear. The recovery center should uncover the first work in the future. If the elimination place was the hotel, then I might be either happy or disappointed. If Teardrop is up for elimination, it could be either being eliminated instantly, or it could be a mixed result of seven contestants plus Teardrop. To tell you the truth, if the Just Not isn't up for elimination, then both the strongest team on Earth and Death Act again would have been up for elimination instead. I'm sorry about the complaint over the Just Not being up for elimination. Price tag died on screen somewhere that was not from Teapot 1 to 4. And since the recommended character staff got removed, there's nothing we can improve. That's it for now. Let's talk about the recap for both Teapot 3 and Teapot 4. Teapot 3's cold open was catastrophic. Teapot 4 stars with a just not at the roller coaster. Well, that's dangerous. We knew Teapot has a disappointing elimination where the contestants disappear instead of the hotel. After the intro for Teapot 3, disappointing death for Price Tag, Puffball, Grassy, Ice Cube, Coiny and Nickel. As for Teapot 4, the final you got the new cake at stake intro. The challenge is not fantastic. Teapot 3 should let Tears drop and are you okay disqualified, but Teapot 4 is way worse than we thought. A huge advantage over Tears Rock was blown up. The stinger for Teapot 3 was funny, but Teapot 4 was just blatant for Tears Rock. After all that frustration over Tears Rock being safe and just not being up for elimination, let's just calm things down. Since Teapot 5, it's the same 5 flaws just like Teapot 2 to 4, like failed computers and exiters not appearing, Teared Rock not being up for elimination, the elimination place of the recovery center's first words never shown up. I hope Teapot 6 better act responsibly, pay attention to detail and listen to their fans that they want. 
Once the top six releases, here's the words that Foley may say about Beard Rock BF4 elimination in the future. It's not enough for me to just win. To avenge just not, I need to make sure that Teardrop loses. Cause I'm gonna be really pissed if Teardrop is still not up for elimination. I hope this happens and let the failed computers and exiters to get some appearances by T-Talk 6. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in T-Talk 6 releases. This is Object C36 Tetris 909, signing off.